Good day, YouTube. I just wanted to do a quick follow-up from my previous video that I had put out um, about making sure that you're prepared with your every need. I had talked a lot about pets during that video. And depending on what age group that you're in and your financial or um, situation, that you, whatever situation you may be going through, if you're age 62 or older, or if you are in some way considered um, by the government as being disabled and you own a pet, there is an option for getting a reduced cost um, for getting pet licensure. I mentioned in a previous video about getting back pet vaccinations and things like that, um, which that's a requirement <laughs> uh, in most places that I know of. Um, some places you can get it, you know, your pet have it, their shots for one year, or you can get a three-year version of the shot. So if, whether it's one year or three years, it's something that's going to be needed. The three-year one seems a little bit more convenient because then you don't have to keep going back and forth to the vet unless some other issue comes up. If you're not able to afford to get it at the vet, just at cost, you paying out of pocket. You know, there is pet insurance, but sometimes pet insurance honestly can be about as expensive as human insurance. Um, and then you have to weigh out the factors of how much are you able to pay or am willing to pay for that. Oops, sorry, for that um, situation. But as I mentioned before, there are different veterinary clinics that are offered by people that are university students that are taking up veterinary care. And there's a licensed veterinarian or, or the instructor is always a, a licensed veterinarian that would be there with those individuals that are taking the classes to ensure that everything goes properly in the physical exam and the vaccinations and everything of the pet. So that is an option in some places. Sometimes you might have to check with the university to see how that option works out. Um, sometimes it's available at different churches or community centers or other things like that. And it may be an option that's available once a month for those that are in need. And if you do find that it is an option that's available and that might work for you, um, go for it if you can, um, because it can be a real help. And it's not just, even though they're there serving the pets, they usually take into consideration the people that are bringing their pets there and they may provide a meal or something for you while you're waiting on your pet to be checked out and get their vaccination and get their little rabies tag and all of that while they're there. It works and it's worth it. And as far as getting the actual license for the pet, you may be able to, if you're living, if you're 62 or older or disabled, or if you're living in a subsidized housing building or, you know, some kind of rent controlled, um, situation, it may be possible to have someone from the Animal Care and Control Services to come in and have a pet licensing day where those folks come in, like one or two people come in from that. They bring all the papers that need to be filled out. Boom, 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 boom. You fill out your papers since you're already a resident at that particular location, they know that it means you're either um, on a limited income or fixed income, um, or you may be disabled, or you're 62 or over, which are some qualifying factors that they have. And then they say, okay, instead of paying $25 per pet, you can pay $10. For example, I don't know what it is in your area, but I've seen it at that price around where I live. Um, and then you just pay 
and you get those tags and everything is registered they put it online boom but now with the way things are changing and have been changing for the past couple of years since the shut-in and all the uh, social unrest and everything that's been happening at least in my area they have not come out since the the shut-in so what they do now is they offer it online and I know some people are saying oh great another online option you know just being able to get on YouTube and do this or that but it's kind of the way that things are going in society today so it may end up being that the online option is the, the way to go but with that once you start getting that if you have an email address then they can email you the information saying you know your pet vaccination and license and everything is due by this date so they give you plenty of time don't procrastinate because you'll find yourself throwing a monkey wrench in and messing stuff up for you so you have time and be able to take care of that and you can enter the information online they set up a profile for you so like if your pet comes up missing boom they can be able to help find your pet and connect your pet back to you more easily and um and they would give you like a permanent id tag which probably has some kind of chip or something in it um looks like those cute little weird buttons that we had back in the 70s when i was in grade school that you know so it's permanent tag though now and so once that information is entered online and you have that permanent tag they will not send another tag out you just send the payment and they go clickety click and put in the computer that you paid you're paid and everything is up to date and you're all good you don't have to keep getting a new tag and, and breaking fingernails or hurting your fingers trying to take the old one off put the new one on because you know those little coil things are really difficult to work with it's kind of like use it and then toss it when you're done you don't have to keep going through all that so those are some options for you um and regarding food resources for your pet like here in minnesota the local one in the twin cities area is called people and pets together and it's a great resource where people can get um name brand pet food for free it's a pet food shelf you know it is the name brand stuff and nothing is old or expired there's nothing wrong with the food it's just that they take in donations from people that are generous and willing to donate to help out animals in the community and then they are able to provide this service not just for one pet but for the community for whomever shows up during that month or you know their cats feeling sick or whatever you know and just like they have the the traveling clinic vans that go around the community clinic vans there is such a thing as that for pets cats dogs spirits things like that um i know that's offered through one place called like the 10 pound cat but it's offered through i believe it's called 10 pound cat don't quote me on that but it's offered through a variety of uh, resources so that's something else that may be available um, in your area just wanted to toss that out there hope you're keeping cool and having a great day